we all have resolutions and especially those resolutions will obviously have some kind of fitness goals and etc etc so today the deep topic is going to be on uh, nutrigenomics and sports nutrition so tell us what is nutrigenomics in the first place so this is something like nasa space stuff okay it's now available to everybody across the world mm -hmm. and it's actually the scientific study of the interaction of nutrition that's your dal chawal roti with your genes now what are genes the human body is the hardware genes is like your software so how would you put food into your body the software behaves yeah. so this is nutrigenomics mm -hmm. that's a amazing no short but very nice explanation easy to understand yeah you know, we we eat a lot we eat a lot of a lot of things and we put things without knowing what you're putting into the yeah. body but now science has come to the level where we are understanding our dna or our code and based on that code you are able to then make carefully constructed decisions what to put mm -hmm. what not to put into your body and how much in terms of food mm -hmm. absolutely so tell us the significance of nutrigenomics and is this only applicable to so only celebrities and sports stars or even aam aadmi can do this no you'd be surprised at our nutrition clinic when i'm working with hundreds and hundreds of people maybe two or three people are celebrities okay yeah. but the rest is aam aadmi is like you and me yeah. uh, what's the philosophy uh, a lot of people want to know how they eat there are two types of uh, people vanity and pain mm -hmm. vanity are those who want to take care of their health and pain is when doctor says hey you know you got a cholesterol or a bp problem go and change the way you eat and do some exercise yeah. so this is applicable to everybody by discovering uh, your genes and saying hey this is the dal or this is the chawal or this is the amount of butter or makkhan or ghee that you need to have mm -hmm. at the end of the day mm -hmm. right and uh, since we're talking about nutrigenomics tell us about the mechanism how these genes and nutrition you know interact and how are they related to each other so genes basically as i said earlier is like the software so if you have a computer and your software is slightly corrupted then that program is not going to run very well so let me take a simple example mm -hmm. there's something called gluten now to all the listeners out there you raj gluten is a protein found in wheat mm -hmm. and wheat is found in your pasta is found in your chapati is found in your bread your biscuits your maida all of this contains gluten yeah now there is a gene that codes for gluten so that gene says i will be able to process gluten or i will not be able to process gluten now when you do a gene test and you find out let's say in my case my own personal cases i'm gluten intolerant which means i cannot process gluten and i just found this out about 2 years ago when nutrigenomics came to india i got the test done because i said you know what let me just get myself tested out so i can explain it to everyone out there and what i found out was i can't now eat wheat I stopped for about a year and my body started behaving brilliantly thinking became better dandruff disappeared adult acne that i had disappeared wow. i uh, i felt better getting up every morning my vitamin b12 levels went up automatically my iron levels went up automatically all because my body said i was not bashing it up with gluten and then i decided to go back and cheat a little bit with gluten and my body now doesn't accept it so i break out into uh, a rash or i get uh, severe headaches or maybe in the next two days i'm sitting in the bathroom because gluten is not being processed so that's the easiest example i could give for a person that food plays a very important role in how it behaves in your body your software is coded with your genetic destiny well said absolutely and so um, what's the status of nutrigenomics in india is it still at a nascent stage or is it developing it's developing it's developing faster than i expected it is it is slightly expensive uh it's, it's the cost of a high end smartphone today about 30 to 50000 to get yourself tested but at the basic level if you want to do the gluten test which is one uh, one gene that you want to test it's about 1500 rupees so it is expanding a lot a lot of doctors are now testing for vitamin deficient genes so if a vegetarian is deficient in b12 you can actually test for that gene and figure out is is it a gene that is causing my deficiency or is it my improper eating habits that is causing the nutritional deficiency so you want to know whether you're born with it or you're causing the issue mm, absolutely and uh, as i said in the previous segment um, you were the chief nutritionist behind amir khan's uh, bugged up body dangal so tell us some ab about this miraculous transformation so well, amir approached uh, my team at quad nutrition and we basically wanted to know how sushil kumar morphed his body for his two olympic medals the things in uh, beijing and the silver in london and uh, i basically told him we do nutrigenomics we do your sports gene testing so if anyone out there wants to become a sushil kumar and has a kid you want to understand if you have the sports gene the sports gene is the power gene the endurance gene so namir khan we found out that he has a power gene 
So his training with his trainer and his whole physiotherapy team changed to getting more rigorous, more high intensity. So that's what genetics helped him out in. In terms of his nutrition, there's a lot of stuff uh, right from gluten to his lactose. You know, uh, milk sensitivity is there in about 82% of Indians. And you're not supposed to have milk if you have a lactose sensitivity. So we discovered small things like this. Certain of his vitamin genes were not working very well, so we tweaked it. Mm -hmm. What you have to understand is film stars are like athletes. They have a role, they have a medal to win, they have a movie role to get to. So there's an occupational hazard over there. I do not suggest to our listeners out there to kind of bulk up with 30 kgs for one year and then nine months later, you know, lose those 30 oh, kgs. Yeah. The important thing is, when we moved for working on his body, we had a goal. His goal was get to 100 kgs, play a father's role. Mm. Nine months later, he had to be a young wrestler who looked 20 years younger and 20 kgs lighter. Mm. So, the whole way of moving the body is weight is based on fat and muscle. Yeah. That is dependent on calories. I tell everyone, I'm a chartered accountant of your food. I look at your debit and I look at your credit. So your input and your output. And that's what we gave the equation to the to the to the people planning his diet. We gave the equation to his trainers, which would uh, make his body give the output. And basically, the meal plan was set up and the exercise plan was set up. If you follow this, if anybody follows it up and has hard work, dedication, two three hours a day yeah. for exercise and eight meals a day are bang on perfect. No cheat meals. They can get the Amir Khan philosophy.